on you. He's gonna try and run from me. I'm not gonna let him. Free turn. Up my throttle. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Grumpy eye and an arrow. Five kilometers, five kilometers, six, five. Nice. If they stay as a group, it could really be... I mean, I would never suggest fighting in an, in an environment like this where you've got this many people on you. It's just not going to end up good for you. So I'm going to pull them into the sun and get them coming at me in the sun. And I'm going to try my best to use the sun to my advantage here as I move in on some of these guys. But he's got a ballistic loadout. So I've got to kill this guy in two passes, otherwise he's going to have too many guys on me. Put my shield power up. Unless I can get him in this next pass, which I might. See how he's over rolling like crazy? He's losing lots of speed when he does that. So, on him again here. So I don't want to waste any more of my ballistic ammo on this guy because he's really disengaging. Which is smart because he's got his friends tailing me. But how I want to chase this guy is I kind of just... There we go. Now I can drop some ballistics. There we go. There's the first one down. Alright. Okay, less is more, right? We don't need to... Overcompensate or overroll. So his shields are down now, so now I can get a couple shots in. Uh, if I'm not sure about the shot placement, uh, oh, almost had him in that turn. I don't want to waste too many more ballistics on this guy. So he looks like he's going this way. Kind of pre turn on him. Pre-turn. There we go. Another one down. Gladius. Alrighty, Rexy. Let's see ya. Come to daddy. Come to daddy. Okay, so I've got his shields down. I want to save my ammo. Because I've got him in a good spot and he's not he's not disengaging, so I got a little bit of time here. That's the plan. Okay, now I've got too much pressure, so now I can finish him with ballistics. See, my shields are almost down now, so now I have to disengage. And I want to stay as flat as I can. So this little indicator and this little plus and minus sign, I want to keep that nice and flat. Because look at my speed overall. That'll give me the distance. If I make too many movements as I disengage, it's going to get difficult for me to maintain distance or at least separate so I have to get flat so he's gonna shoot from way too far away Free knows a little bit here so he's in position his, his friend is not there we go now I could, yeah I don't want to use too many more ballistics on him okay so I'm just gonna save my last little bit I might have to. There we go. Now I've taken some distortion damage. So my top guns were kind of slow, so my turret's been hit. Gladius. Gladius. So the trick here is again, right, is always just looking at who's coming in and who's coming out. This guy's got a lot of momentum coming in. So they've got to close the distance on me if they want to. There we go. I got to be careful now. So I'm out of bull ballistics now. So now it's it's gonna be bad news bears to me if I'm not careful. Another one down. I think it's down to a one v one now. Bring him in here into the turn. Come here, you. Again, right? He's over rolling here. A lot of common mistakes, right? Just basic, basic fundamentals here, right? Basic fundamentals. Again, less is more. You don't need to be super 
super hard on your accelerations. Like, look at my throttle input right now. It's a uh, max now because I'm closing now. It's about 10% as I come into the turn. Now it's slowly increasing as I apex that corner. And if I'm ret if I'm getting shot, I can kind of counter that with a like a counterclockwise roll in the next direction. And there it is. Whew. All right, everybody, buckle up. Today we are going to look at the six versus one scenario where I was able to train with an organization called Overlord, I believe. Uh, we jumped into the Persistent Universe. I threw up my my server challenge as I always do. I say, hey, come make some money. Come kill Avenger 1 on day Mario on 1. And the Overlord team rose to the challenge. This was a really exciting fight. And it's a great opportunity for everyone to, to kind of take some points to learn from. And I got nothing but love for, for this team. They did a great job and uh, they definitely earned their their 250,000 credits after this one. Uh, absolute blast. I really, I really want to continue to do organizational stuff like this. So if you're an org out there and you want to do cool stuff like this, you know, follow the example of the Overlord guys. Get out there, start training together and uh, and see where it goes right so right here in this situation we're starting off the fight um i believe it's four of them right now i believe two of them are probably still on the way and um again right when it comes to fighting multiple opponents you got to break it down into manageable bite-sized pieces it, it, taking on all four fighters in a close area at the same time is absolute suicide especially if something like an arrow that you know one little size one shield you're, you're not going to really do much right so so here we go into the first turn i picked my target i found someone that i wanted to take a dive on and you'll notice that my shields are, are back to 100 percent now because i'm putting my power in my shields i'm looking for an opportunity to take a shot on that first pass i'm looking towards me the captain rex coming in at 2000 meters and again right this is a common strategy that works quite well if you've got someone on you um, the best way to get them off you is to bring your buddies in to kind of shoot their tail off and go defensive, right? However, Judge Chaos here isn't really doing the best defensive maneuver. And the reason for that is because he's not flattening his trajectory out long enough. And when I get an opportunity to kind of take a pass at him here, um, he ends up taking a lot of damage. And again, right, like if, if you watch his corkscrews here, uh, they're a bit less of a corkscrew and they're much more of like a an overinflated, I guess you could say, aileron roll, right? So his flight path is, it's causing him to slow down too much, which if you see here, gives me an opportunity to close the distance. And once I get the distance closed, boom, there's the first of four down, right? So then I take a look around, I see who's chasing me. Because again, the higher the speed, the, more, the faster he's trying to disengage, he actually makes it harder for his team to come in and help him. So if you're gonna disengage, there's two ways to do it. You can disengage in the furball, which means you stay in, a, in the circle fight and you wait for your buddies to come and close the distance, or you disengage a higher speed like that and you completely disengage from the fight. And hopefully you've communicated with your wingman um, so he knows that he's gonna have to close that distance as quick as he can. So again, another turn here, another little bit of a pre-nose, and again, open up with the ballistics so that as soon as we have an opportunity with those shields down, we can hit that arrow as hard as we can and get those numbers down. I think we get him here on this pass. Again, right, predicting our motion, looking at the way his nose is pointing so we know exactly where he is going to be rather than, uh, you know, kind of just working strictly off the pip. We're actually looking at our target, right? So in this pass, a lot of damage, but no kill, and that's okay. So it looks like he's going to come around for a second pass. We've got another guy coming up from behind us, but again, right? If you look at our speeds, we're actually traveling quite fast. So we're really trying to manage our speeds here. We're trying to manage our distance. I'm staying at around 400. I get the pre nose because what I've got to do is he's at high speed. I'm at high speed. His wingman's at high speed. So I've got to get the slot and I've got to get it fast. He is damaged. I get the pre nose. I get the burst. Boom, there's the kill. And that right there is why the mixed loadout can be good in some situations in the sense that if you're going to push a lot of damage onto a guy very quickly in a short amount of time, the mixed loadout does pretty well um, because the shields will get dropped quite quickly and those ballistics will penetrate through. And the more the, the shield gets dropped, the higher the percentage of penetration that gets through the shield. So here we go. 
back again looking trying to pick up targets here so we've taken three out we're now on number four and two more just showed up so the fight is still I think at a you three know, v one at this point so here we go fighting a gladius there again same kind of procedure looking at my vector again I'm not over rolling I'm not over moving I'm just rolling enough to avoid the distant like from the shots coming in again right there we got the second guy shooting at me so I know I know I've got someone on me. I don't have much time. I've maybe got this pass and maybe one more before um, like he's on top of me doing damage and I've got to pull off, right? It's, it's, it's important to understand like where your limit is. You don't want to push the envelope too much because you push the envelope. There again, another, another example of the mixed loadout doing quite well in that situation. There, there is the second pass. And just like I said, as soon as that second pass is in, boom, my shields are down to 17%. So I knew, because it takes time to close the distance, right? And it's very difficult. It's very difficult to close the distance if uh, if you're traveling at high speed. We're now at 1,000 meters per second here. We've we've got our shields back up. We've re redistributed our power. We're getting our engine power back up because our ship is getting tired. Our arrow is getting tired. And by tired, I mean like our energy and our boost is getting low. So we've got to get some boost energy back up because we need that to make our pre-noses and make our turns nice and tight. So once we've had a chance to kind of recuperate, re uh, you know, recharge, get our stamina back, our arrow is not tired anymore, she's ready to get back in there. So here we go on to, I believe this is number four or five. I can't, I've lost count at this point. So again, here's the pre-nose. I've got two guys engaging me. One guy you can see is at very high speed, like he's not going to stay in the, in the slot for too long, and I've already pre-nosed his wingman. So this will give me an opportunity to engage this gentleman here on maybe one or two passes like in in a multiple engagement like this you've only really got one or two passes to make the kill anything more than that and you're really risking you're really risking death because if you've got a if you've got a guy who's got his aim on point he's not going to give you more than one or two passes so here's the second pass i'm actually going to go in for the third pass now my shields are down you got to risk it for the biscuit i'm going to take a risk here I'm going to use a couple more ballistic shots. I'm going to stay in the furball, and furball is as in you know staying within that uh, that 800 meter uh, weapon distance between all the other fighters. And I've got him on this pass again, looking at his prediction, looking at where he's floating. Boom! I've got him. I've got a chance to put my shields up, and as soon as I can, I've got those shields back up, and I'm getting the distance again. Get the distance, reset, look for my next target. So I took a look back, take a look who's chasing me. I've got one, two more on me. I believe that was four that was down. So this is five. And here we come in. Same procedure, right? Rinse and repeat. Take it in bite size. Just, just take one piece at a time. You don't have to shoot both guys at the same time. Okay, so here we go. The first guy is already, I can see he's got too much energy. Too much energy, his speed's too high. I'm going to let him overshoot me and I'm going to go for his wingman. I'm going to go for the guy in the back because he's going to have less time to react and he's going to expect me to go after the first guy in that zone so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go for a first and a second pass on this guy here now they've both closed to within furball distance i don't have much time boom my shields are down i'm going to risk it i'm going to do a little bit of a counter steer here a little bit of a movement and i'm going to try my best to knock this guy out because if i can bring it down to a 1v1 i feel pretty confident that i'd be able to skill the gap on that last one and into the last turn. I'm out of ballistics now, so I've only got my lasers. Again, another limitation of the ballistic loadout. And there we go. In the second pass, my shields are down, but I don't have too much hull damage, so I had the chance to risk it there. And I've got the last guy coming in here, number six. And again, same process, right? You don't have to overcomplicate it, guys. Just look at your vector indicator, keep your movements nice and tight, watch your throttle discipline, move into the shot, pitch and roll so that you're always pitching your nose up onto the target. Look for disengaged tells like he just did there. Keep closing the distance, keep orientating in the right way, and stay calm. The best thing to do in a situation like this where you're just, just so many people is don't overthink it. Don't think about what's going to happen next or, or how many guys you're fighting. Just take it one problem at a time. Okay, um, now I'm fighting this guy. Now I'm fighting this guy. Now I'm fighting the last guy. It's just one problem at a time. At some point, something is going to go bad, and that's okay. But what you have to do is you have to be able to respond quickly to that situation 
and be able to manage what you can do in the time. It doesn't matter that it's an unfair fight. Nobody, life's not fair. That's just the way life is, right? So what you got to do is you got to feel, you got to look, well, what can I do in this situation? How can I better make the choices I can here? It's not a fair fight, doesn't matter, but what can I do now? Because the less your mind spends wasting time thinking about the who's, the what's, the what ifs, you can spend all your mental energy and focus on actually performing the tasks in front of you. And there's the last kill in the 6v1. One problem at a time. One problem at a time. Right? Just like, uh, you know, if you've ever watched the movie The Martian, right? At some point, something is going to go south. And everything is going to fail. And you're going to think, okay, this is it. This is how I end. But if you just take it one problem at a time, one pass at a time, one fight at a time, and you just go on to the next problem and the next problem and the next turn and the next turn, then you'll be able to make it back to Spaceport and be able to tell the story to all your friends. All right, guys, this was the breakdown. It was a great fight. I sent the 250000 to the team after this because they fought very hard. It was a great experience. I hope they had a great chance to watch this video, guys, and uh, and and get some learning points and remember right it's not a sprint it's an endurance race star citizen is going to be around for quite a long time guys um eve eve online was around for and we're, we're getting we're getting on like almost 20 years now so i think star citizen is going to be around for almost the same amount of time probably even longer so look at what you want to achieve in the year 2022 you know, next year, look at what you want to achieve. Don't look at it like I want to be great next week or the week after. That's great. Just put the time in today, 1% today, 1% tomorrow. And a year from now, when you look back on it and you look back at how far you've come, you'll realize that it's a night and day difference. All right, guys, if you break a sweat to get it, it's worth it. I promise you that. All right, guys, I was Avenger1. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. And ultimately, I hope you were entertained. Take a look at Predator mounts if you guys are interested in getting joystick mounts for your sticks. It's the ones I use, and I find them fantastic. Great quality sticks. Tremendous. And um, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys in the next video. I was Avenger1, and I'll see you next time.